Throughout history, man has felt a unique kinship with animals. The special relationship between pet and master may be based upon an unexpected link. Only recently has science begun to investigate the possibility of a psychic extrasensory connection. The Psychical Research Foundation, this subject is about to begin an important experiment involving her pet kitten. Though they are separated by more than half a mile, she will attempt to reach out with her mind and influence the animal. If the kitten responds, can it prove the existence of animal ESP? This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. It is August in Walcott, Indiana, and Bobby is lost. He became separated from his family five hours ago as they were moving from their old home to a new home more than 2,000 miles away. They searched for him, but not finding him, sadly, had to continue on. Now abandoned, he struggles through a long journey. We would expect him to turn back along the route they have traveled, to return to his old home. But Bobby pushes forward, searching for a place he's never known. No matter how great the obstacles, Bobby travels on as though drawn by some unseen beacon. Researchers call this side-trailing, from the word psychic. It's often confused with homing, but it's quite another phenomenon. Homing occurs when an animal is taken away from a familiar place and finds its way back following normal sensory cues. A dog may follow a trail or remember familiar landmarks. But in verified cases of side-trailing, there is no explanation other than ESP. Six months later, Bobby arrives in Portland, Oregon. Finally, he's reunited with those he loves. Was Bobby guided by emotional signals from his family? Could it be that extrasensory perception was the magnet that pulled the animal and his masters together? The possibilities of animal ESP could have a profound effect on all of us. Some forms of communication could be drastically altered maybe even become obsolete. Stories such as Bobby's have intrigued scientists for years. His case is among hundreds examined by Dr. J.B. Rhine, America's Dean of Parapsychology. For Dr. Rhine, such examinations are a labor of love. There's a great deal of evidence that there is a, uh, a, an extrasensory exchange between animals and men. Uh, we'd like to have more evidence. We'd like to keep the question open rather than making it a, a decisive uh, conclusion at this time, but there's a great deal of evidence on it. Solomon! Come on! Anecdotes of side trailing are not conclusive proof of animal ESP, but they do suggest that the bond between some masters and pets may be so deep that even distance cannot separate them. While a director at the Rockland Research Institute in New York, Dr. Hans Esser searched for laboratory evidence of this unspoken link between masters and their dogs. Each dog in the study was placed in an isolated soundproof chamber. There, his physical activity and heart rate were recorded. Dr. Esser selected dogs with a close relationship with their masters feeling these teams would most likely demonstrate an ESP link. The master was then isolated in a separate soundproof room. You know, we will try in this experiment to replicate the bond established between you and your dog, and in general between master and dog. 
try to experience it as fully as possible so that the emotion you feel and you generate can be picked up by your dog. The only possible connection between master and dog would be ESP. Okay, the dog's lying down now. We can begin. Do you mark? Yeah. Start. You'll have the first event. Now. The master was shown a series of slides. Some were pleasant subjects, evoking a positive reaction. Others were disturbing. Would the dog perceive a change in his master's mood? The dog is perceiving probably uh, emotional reaction from the master. This, in our thinking, takes place reaction. through the oldest part of our brain. This brain is non-verbal. It does not talk, but it does form the seed of our emotion. Although this experiment is a preliminary investigation, a pilot study, Dr. Esser did record a correlation in a few instances. He continued with phase two. Gary, I do want you now to imagine exactly the episode of pleasure that you had this morning with Solomon. And in your mind, recollect the whole event in the park. Finding laboratory proof of animal ESP is most difficult. This study is among the first to begin the search and raise an even greater question. What I am investigating is actually the so-called web of life, the relationships between every single living being in the large society of this earth. It is nowadays an ecological concept. How do we all hang together? While the study did not provide proof, it had set the theme for our search and would lead us to further fascinating evidence. Beyond emotions, might our animals also perceive when we are having an extrasensory or psychic experience? During times of great stress, people have reported having out-of-body experiences, feeling literally that they can leave their own form, hover above it, or travel to other places. Such reports are not uncommon. But some people, like Sherry Green, feel they can actually control the phenomenon. Sherry says she's able to have an out-of-body experience at will. Could her pet kitten respond to her experience? And if so, would this indicate animal ESP? A classic experiment tested this question. In search of reunited key investigators from the Psychical Research Foundation of Durham, North Carolina. Researchers take Sherry and her kitten to an observation room half a mile away. The kitten will remain here for the experiment. And this is where Jill's going to be. And Johnny's going to be charting Jill's movements and also the number of times that she meows. And this is where we want you to focus your experience. Sherry returns to the lab to have her out-of-body experience. The experiment is supervised by Dr. John Hartwell. Sherry, we're plugging in the last of these wires here now so that we can uh, learn something about the physiology of this experience. In, in addition to how the animal responds, we want to know something about how it is that your body responds. We began to pursue these studies because the subjective nature of the out-of-body experience begs for that kind of research. For in this experience, a person feels like he is out of his body. He feels like he is out there and uh, perceives the world from a different point of view, and perhaps he affects the world. Now, Okay, in the critical process. moments before the experiment, Sherry's brain waves and pulse are closely monitored. She meditates and prepares for her experience. A half a mile away, the kitten is placed on the observation grid. She paces restlessly in the alien, unfamiliar surroundings. The experimenters wonder if the kitten's behavior will change during Sherry's experience. As Sherry meditates, she signals her experience is about to begin. Sherry now feels she is leaving her body to visit her kitten. She attempts to calm and reassure it with her presence to make it feel more secure in a strange place. Each trial lasted several minutes. Over 33 trials,
the researchers found a striking correlation. Whenever the subject reported an out-of-body experience, the kitten became measurably quieter and calmer. Its behavior had changed dramatically. Whether the kitten actually saw or felt a presence, no one can say. But during these out-of-body experiences, something was happening. We tried people, animals, physical sensors, uh, various electromagnetic uh, detectors. The only consistent evidence that we found was the behavior of this one kitten. The fact that the uh, kitten gave the only consistent results there is intriguing. We don't know what that means, but it does seem to us that it is very important. And we would like to uh, try to go further and see if we can come to interpret that way. If further study reveals that animals have psychic abilities, might some species be able to use them to alter their world? And might we someday learn to communicate with our pets through ESP? The In Search of Cameras turn to these questions next. The possibility that animals can perceive their world through extrasensory means leads to further questions. Can they influence their world through psychokinesis, mind over matter? Could an animal with primitive mental ability, such as a fish, exert an influence on its environment? Current research suggests this may be so. At the Mind Science Foundation in San Antonio, Texas, Dr. William Broad conducts an experiment to determine if a Siamese fighting fish can alter the conditions in its tank. The male Siamese fighting fish is extremely aggressive. It displays hostile behavior to other males and even to its own reflection in a mirror. Given the choice, it will seek out a male to challenge. To study the effects of this aggressive desire, Dr. Broad has designed a special aquarium. Along one side is a mirror that is only visible to the fish at irregular intervals, selected at random by a special generator. To determine when the mirror will be visible, the generator uses the same random principle as flipping a coin. Through many trials, the mirror should appear exactly half the time. Yet, when the fighting fish is placed in the special tank, a consistent and startling change takes place. The mirror begins to appear more than half the time. Could the fish and its desire to fight cause a change in the random operation of the generator? The fish seemed to influence the random generator. That is, after about 3,400 trials, the machine started generating more mirror trials than you would expect by chance. But if you take the fish out, that effect goes away. And the most uh, simple explanation of that is that the fish is somehow influencing that generator, although there's no physical connection between the two. That is, some kind of psychokinetic influence is being displayed here. In uh, human beings, for example, there's considerable research that indicates that persons can mentally influence a variety of systems, living systems, inanimate systems, small ones, large ones, simply by imagining or intending for certain outcomes to occur. And apparently the same thing is occurring in the Siamese fighting fish in this experiment. Dr. Broad is also searching to discover what extrasensory link there may be between animal and man. His subjects have had success influencing the behavior of a mouse-like gerbil without even being in the same room. A lot of us feel a special closeness with animals, a kind of connectedness that goes beyond the usual kinds of relationships with animals. And what the data of parapsychology is suggesting is that this feeling of connectedness, or this fact of connectedness, may be much more general, that we are, in fact, intimately connected with other human beings, with animals, with all aspects of nature. Parapsychologists aren't certain what this intimate connection may be. There is a theory that the unintentional psychic abilities of the researchers affect the outcome of every experiment. So it's not yet possible to isolate and prove animal ESP. In Cincinnati, a veterinarian finds the concept vitally important in his practice. Veterinary science is one of the most difficult fields of medicine, for the doctor cannot communicate with the patient. What happened to this little fellow? Did he Dr. Marvin Kane is a former veterinarian of the Cincinnati Zoo 
and has practiced for 23 years. He welcomes the most difficult cases. Five days ago, you presented your dog completely paralyzed, no feeling. Uh, we've treated him, we've taken x-rays, myelograms, and there's no definite disturbance of the vertebrae. He has responded to a point, but yet there is no realization of where his legs and feet are. Having studied in China, Dr. Kane now teaches acupuncture to other vets and continues his search for new ways to relieve animals' suffering. One of his greatest allies is a consultant whom he feels has the gift of communicating with animals through ESP. She's Beatrice Lidecker of Los Angeles. I like to think of myself as a diagnostic tool to a veterinarian because an animal can't say where it hurts, but he hurts. And the vets many times say, I know the animal's sick, but I can't pinpoint it. And I feel that when, when I first met Dr. Kane, he was skeptical. He wanted, you know, he wanted some no proof, which I couldn't blame. Now, after having been stimulated by the possibility that someone could indeed look into and perceive an animal's body and mind, uh, this opened up a new possibility of diagnosis for me. And I decided to test Miss Lidecker and take x-rays of a known diagnostic patient and see whether or not she would come up with the same solution that I did. Dr. Kane prepared his test with a thoroughbred jumping horse whose tiny yet painful leg fractures he had already diagnosed. Could Beatrice discover the problem through mental communication with the horse itself? He had one horse there that was a jumper and he was having difficulty with him. And he asked me, can you tell me what's wrong with him? When I asked the horse, how do you feel physically when you're jumping, he showed me a picture in my mind of him going over the jump. And when he landed on his front feet, I felt sharp pain going down my arms. The pain going down the back of my arms, which would be equal to his splint bone. Astoundingly, Beatrice had described exactly the fractures in each foreleg. I was very conscious of the fact that she did not even look at the parts of the horse as we would go about examining them. She stood there and she just communicated, seemingly communicated with the horse. After five years from that first initial experience, I still am amazed and I'm still, well, now I'm very respectful of Beatrice's ability to look into and communicate with an animal, with an animal's consciousness, I feel that possibly we all might have that ability and we all should try to exercise it. For 10 years, Beatrice has traveled the country helping animals and their owners through ESP. In her books, she reveals that the process is still a mystery. I cannot explain to you what the mode of transmitting the mental pictures and things are. That's nothing that I can say that I can feel. I don't even know that it could be measured on an instrument, but it's there. We're all born with it as children, and you can put children and animals together and they can talk to each other with no problem at all. Beatrice finds we can recapture this extrasensory ability and reports success teaching owners to communicate with their pets. Now tonight I'm going to be teaching you a new language transmitted by mental pictures. Now to the degree that you believe in what you're doing, to that degree you will have success, no more and no less. The important thing is that at first you cannot tell if it's something the animal's communicating to you or if it's your imagination. So no matter what you get, no matter what the feeling is, the picture, uh, the hunch, whatever you call it, Act on it, because as you use it, as you practice it, you will begin to tell later on whether it really is your imagination or whether it's something the animal's really telling you. The people that make the best students are the ones that can forget themselves long enough to get inside of something else, to see life from that animal's point of view and say, hey, maybe their motivation's different. People write to me all the time and say, wow, my life is so different, you know. It has just totally changed my attitudes with my animals, and we now have a different relationship. 
professional animal keepers like those at Kings Island Park in Ohio ask Beatrice to visit their animals and communicate with them. The results are often striking. She has helped solve the most difficult behavioral and medical problems. What I hope people will come to understand about themselves, about the animals, and about ESP between us is that here's a new exciting dimension. We have a lot to learn. And I hope that people will really find the dimension of excitement that I'm just beginning to scratch the surface on. It isn't just in our pets, but it's in the whole animal kingdom. And I often wonder if that isn't what God meant when he said, ask the beasts of the field, and they shall teach thee, and the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, and they shall declare it unto thee. In all the earth, there are fewer bonds closer than those between us and our animals. From the romping days of childhood to the quieter hours of later years, our animals are there as companions, comforters, and confidants. Many of us feel that this relationship is not hampered by the lack of a common language, because the relationship goes beyond words into the realm of feeling. Just as human beings share ESP experiences with one another, it may be that the bond between humans and animals is but another link on that same chain. The more animal ESP is investigated, the more we may learn that a bond between us and animals is real, and that we are all, in fact, connected in a web of life. Perhaps someday, we will communicate clearly and directly with animals, avoiding the barriers of language. And this may lead to better communication among us all. Our exploration of the animal ESP link might help us to discover other secret abilities in ourselves. <laughs>